Now, revelation in the Greek has two meanings. Now, the first word for revelation is apocalypse, which means unveiling, uncovering, or revealing the word of God. But it speaks of the future things. So what the Lord showed John on the island of Patmos is acapolosis, which is things which are yet to happen, but he was shown. Now, the other word for revelation in the Greek is apocalypto, which speaks of the present thing. It means to take off the cover, to disclose, to reveal the word of God. Turn with me to the book of Psalms. 119 and verse 130. The word of God says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. The entrance of the word of God brings illumination and it gives understanding unto the simple. Now, the simple in this sense speaks of childlike. Say with me, childlike. Now, the word of God says, If we are not like children before him, we can't inherit the kingdom of heaven. In other words, if you want to receive revelations of God's word, for you to be blessed, for you to fulfill your desire, you need to come before the Lord as a baby, as a child. Because when you are so old before God, you say to yourself, I know everything, I don't need you to speak to me. But the word of God says, when you receive the word of God, as a child, you receive understanding. I pray today, may the Lord grant us understanding to his word in the name of Jesus Christ. The 32 chapter of Job, verse number 7 and 8. The Lord spoke through his prophet Job, and this is what the Lord said. He said, I said, days should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. Sometimes we think that how long you've been with God will help you to understand the ways of God. Job also thought the same. He said, I, I said many years to teach wisdom. The next verse says, But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty, that giveth them understanding. And when I read this word, I am so humbled. So it is not how old you are. It's not how long you've been in the house of God that will help you to get illumination of the word of God. But there is a spirit in man which brings inspiration, which grants us understanding. I pray today in the name of Jesus, just like Paul spoke to his son Timothy. He said, I pray that you fall into flames the gift of God that is within thee. I pray that may the spirit of God in you be revived this morning. That the Lord will grant you understanding of his word. The many words you've received from day one. It will come alive for you today in the name of Jesus. The inspiration of the Lord. The word spirit is rock, which is the breath of God. The Holy Spirit. Now, inspiration is a word, nashama, meaning breath, wind, divine inspiration, intellect. So if I'm looking for divine inspiration, if I'm looking for intellect, I need to receive it from the Lord, my creator, Elohim. He's the giver of wisdom. He's the giver of revelation. He's the giver that will grant you the illumination of the word of God coming to you right now. He is the one that gives. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the word of God says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture, from Genesis to Malachi, from Matthew to Revelation, all scripture is not given because Nehemiah dreamt and saw things. It wasn't given because Paul went to school. But every word of God, every word of God, is given by inspiration of God. It's given by the intellect, 
divine inspiration, the bread, rock of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for corruption, for instruction in righteousness. And so every word of God that we receive, if you don't have the breath of God in thee, you will not have understanding. The word of God says, for lack of knowledge, and people perish. My people, not the outsiders, but those that are in the body, perish. For many years, my understanding of deliverance was not complete. Until the Lord sent to me, his servant, that he has opened that revelation to him, Pastor Victor. And when he spoke to my spirit, what deliverance means, instantly my eyes were open and I saw truth. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? And so faith, in Romans 10, it says, faith Cometh by hearing. You hear the sound of a wind. Faith cometh by hearing the sound of the Spirit of God. Faith cometh when your spirit comes into contact with the Spirit of God. Then you hear. Otherwise, you will just hear me speaking. You just hear my lyrics, my genial words. But you don't get what the Lord is saying. Faith cometh by hearing. I pray today, may the Lord grant you that spirit for you to hear. His word in the name of Jesus. Faith cometh by hearing. Without the Holy Spirit in you, you cannot appreciate the word of God to uncover truth. You can't. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can never appreciate God's word. You can never appreciate God's word. I call this Rima, and this is my definition of Rima, the prophetic declaration of the word, or the prophetic declaration of the word you have received by revelation. The prophetic revelation of the word of God that you receive. Peter and John have heard Jesus speaking so many times that he can heal. He's a healer. He's a healer. But John, Acts chapter 3, the Bible says, one morning when they were going to church to pray, they saw this man crippled by the beautiful gate, always begging, that day being carried. And when he saw them coming, dressed well like I am this morning, thinking that they have some gold and silver for him, he begged them for money. And then he said, look at us. Then the Lord gave Peter the rima of the word he has received all his years. The word was, by my stripes you are healed. Peter, there were two, Peter and John. But Peter said, for such as I have, for such as I have received from the Lord, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And that moment, the man began walking. Why? He received illumination of the God that heals and spoke the declaration word by faith. So, Rema is not just the speaking of the word of God. If you don't receive revelation of God's word, it becomes a religious statement. It becomes the way people pray every day. You just open a Bible and you just read. Because you don't have any revelation, it doesn't give you any power. But when you receive God's revelation power, the word of God becomes alive. And that is where you shout, Aha! Yes! Wow! Because you've seen light. You've been reading the same text every day, every morning. But one time, one day, that word becomes alive. And you say, Yes! I get it. I pray may you receive illumination of the word of God. You've been receiving all your years, even this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus. If you agree, shout Amen. The fourth chapter of Proverbs, the 20th verse and the 22nd verses, Solomon said, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Hit them in the midst of your hearts. The 22nd verse says, For they are life unto those that find them, 
and held unto their flesh. Oh, so the word of God is dead to those who don't find them. You may read it, but if you don't get the revelation of God's word, it is dead unto you. But the word of God is alive to those who find them. Now, how can you find the word of God? This is the danger. Amos chapter 3 verse 7, it says, For God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophet. Until you receive revelation of the word of God in your life, you will not see the word of God being coming alive for you. With that revelation, there is little or no manifestations of God's word. Hallelujah. Without you receiving illumination to the word of God, you will see very little of the presence of God in your life. You may read the Bible every morning. You may know every verse in scripture. But it takes the spirit of God that brings you illumination that will help you to understand the word of God. In Acts chapter 26, verses 20, 28, verse 26 and 27, the writer says, saying, go unto this people and say, hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their eyes are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed. And so you may hear the word of God, but you will not understand it. You may see things, but you cannot perceive. There are situations where people were, pray, were, were blind. They were even blind. They couldn't see things. But because the Lord encountered them, they saw the revelation of the Lord. They heard what the Lord is saying. That is why in the second chapter of, of um, the last book in the New Testament, Revelation chapter 2 verse 7, John spoke by revelation to the churches and he said, Let him that has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying. This is repeated seven times in the book of Revelation. Let him that has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying. What ear? The ear of the Lord. Your spirit has an ear. Let he that has an ear hear what the Lord is saying. People are not givers today in churches because they don't see the illumination of why we must give. People go to church when they want to go because they don't see the revelation of fellowship. But let those that have ears listen to what the spirit is saying to the churches. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 16, verse 14, Paul was preaching the word of God. Like I'm speaking this morning, and a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Tertira, one that worshipped God, heard us. And the Bible said, when he, she heard those whose heart the Lord opened to give heed unto the things which were spoken by Paul, the Lord Opened her heart. May the Lord open your heart this morning and always in the name of Jesus. Paul prayed for the church. Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. It's not in the projection, but listen. He said, One thing I pray for you is that the Lord will grant you revelation of His word, that you may understand the deep things of God. I pray, may the Lord open the eyes of His people. That we may see what the Lord is doing. Hallelujah. Two blind men in Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 to 29, they were blind. Blind men. But they saw who Jesus was. And they ran to him. And Jesus passed by from thence. Two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Have mercy on us, thou son of David. Blind men. And when he was come into the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They say unto him, Yeah, Lord, we believe. Hallelujah. Then touch he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. You see, blind men could even see who Jesus was. They were blind. Many were having their sight. They couldn't see. 
They only saw him as the son of Mary, the son of Joseph, the carpenter. They only saw him as someone from Nazareth, a branch town, a town with no glory. They had no value for him. Isaiah says, and they hid as their faces from me. He had no beauty, no cumulus. He was ordinary. So they did not see anything good in him. But blind men saw who he was. And they ran towards him. It is not having good sight. That will help you to have revelation of God's word. No. You can have all the good sight. You can see afar. But if the Lord will not open the eyes of your understanding, you can see truth. It doesn't take good sight. No way. It takes the revelation of the Lord given to you by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It is an inward conviction that only the Holy Spirit can give to you. This revelation I'm speaking about takes the conviction of the Holy Spirit. As you cannot comprehend, you cannot understand, you cannot appreciate it. No. That is why it's so much important for you to always acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. Jesus said, when he comes, he will be your teacher. He will teach you all things into truth. Your teacher. The one that opens your eyes to see. Your spiritual eyes to see. Hallelujah. We see the experience on the road to Emmaus that the disciples of Jesus, after the Lord came back to life from the dead, walking with them, were debating whether indeed their master was back to life. He was with them. But they could not see that he was the one. Until he went with them to their house and explaining to them the words of God from the old covenant. And the moment he broke the bread, the word of God says their eyes were open. And they said, yes, didn't you feel it when he was speaking to us? May the eyes of your understanding be open today in the name of Jesus to see truth, to see truth, to see truth. I pray in this season when on the 15th of August, India is going to have their 72 years of independence. Truth will break forth in this country in the name of Jesus. Because I remember when the Lord called 72 disciples. 72 were called. But out of them, 12 were empowered and they touched the lives of the entire world. I pray may the 12 be found in Adonai so that you will touch every home, every house in this country. Sometimes preaching well will not do good. Sometimes even going out to evangelize will not do good. But when people are sleeping in their homes, when they are in their temples praying, and the Lord opened their eyes and they see, like Nebuchadnezzar, when he put the three in the fire, the word of God said, the Lord opened his eyes and he saw the fourth man. And he said, there were three men. But now I see the fourth man. May the Lord reveal himself to every corner and quarters of this nation for people to know that the Lord Jesus himself is Christ and Lord. We only put two hands together for the Lord. You may be working with God, having prophecy to prophesy even about him. But if your eyes are not opened by him, you will not have comprehend. One day, one day, John, John the Baptist. You know, his mother is Elizabeth. And the scripture says Elizabeth was the cousin of Mary. So it's possible, Pastor Victor, that when Jesus and John were growing up, they were playing cricket together. Yeah, they were eating together. I mean, John knew Jesus, you know. He knew him as his cousin. He knew him. They were, I remember one, one day they had a fight, you know. So he knew him. But when this began to work in you, it triggers something. As he was in the Jordan River baptizing, and he saw Jesus, that he knew all his life, coming. And the word of God says, the Lord opened his eyes, and he says, Behold, behold, the lamp of God that takes away the sins of the world. Wow. Behold. The word behold comes with something in scriptures. Whenever you see behold in the Bible, it, it's not the same way. They shouted. It's like, look. Suddenly, John's eyes were open. 
he received revelation that this cousin is not just a cousin. He is Christ the Lord. May your eyes open, shout yes. Come on, come on, shout yes. It brings something, triggers something in your life. You can't even dance. But one morning something triggers in you. And without a beat, without a song, the word hallelujah is the Hebrew word halal. It is like a footballer who scores a goal. And without any sound, you see the footballers dancing, praising God. Because something in the inside is affecting emotions on the outside. When I shout hallelujah, it's not because I has a good, good voice to shout. I am loud in church. I'm very quiet outside church. <laughs> yes. My life, I'm not so much moved by. I, I, the Lord uses me to perform signs and miracles, yes. But I'm not so much moved by the signs. I am moved by the revelation word of the Lord. Amen. So when Pastor Victor sits me down, he says, Emmanuel, come. And this father of mine that I've got in now, is teaching me revelation. Sometimes I can't even sit. Shouting them, say yes, 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 I'm getting it. John shouted. He was a prophet of the day. He was the man of the moment. But he realized there was more to being the man of the moment when he received revelation. He said, This man, I'm not ready to touch even his sandals. Why? Because the Lord opened his eyes. You may have a son in your house, a daughter in your house, a wife, a husband. You may see him as useless and nobody. May the Lord open your eyes to see that your son, your daughter, your wife, your husband is a man, a woman of God. Naaman, a man of valor, a commander of the army of Syria, was suffering from leprosy. And the word of God says, they are made, they are made from the land of Israel. They are made, not somebody who was visiting their maid said, Mama, I've seen daddy suffering from leprosy. But as there's a man in my nation, a prophet of God. I know, I believe. If he will go there and see him, he will be killed. They humbled themselves to the voice of that maid. They received it as God speaking. And what was the end result? Naaman was cured from a leprosy. Sometimes we See and judge people by their appearance. That is how the world judges. A man of God can be deceived, even Samuel, the prophet of his time. And the Lord said, go to the house of Jesse and anoint his son to be the king of Israel. When he saw the first one coming, handsome, dressed well, thick, tall, speaking well, he said, this is the one. Come, let me anoint you. The Lord said, how dare you judge by what you see? Appearance will deceive you. By the way, this church is beautiful. <laughs> this church is not deceiving me. Hallelujah. But many times, appearance can deceive you. You need revelation before you get your wife and husband. You need revelation before you choose what to study even in school. This word is coming at the time the man of God has given us this book. The sending of spirits and false prophets. When I was reading this book last night, the Lord showed me something. The 22nd page of his book, the third and fourth paragraphs. I want to read it. He was speaking to us about what he was, he was going through when the Lord called him, wanted to even quit ministry. You know, nothing was moving him. And his church was going for a camp. And he went, listen to what he said. At a camp, one of the guest speakers who had come from UK began prophesying over me. The prophetic word broke me and I wept, especially when he heard the words. When I heard the words, Pastor Victor is saying here, well done. At that time, he was saying to himself, I have not done much. And the Lord was saying to him, Victor, well done, good and faithful servant. The Lord is saying that he will make rivers flow on barren heights and springs within the valleys. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the porch ground into springs. 
He says, my spirit was renewed. And those feelings of discouragement were lifted. May, may the Lord use, maybe me this morning. May the Lord use, maybe your husband, your wife, your friend. To give you a word. And may your spirit's eyes see the light. May that cover be taken off. And may you see light. And may you be revived like never before in the name of Jesus. In the fourth paragraph you said, A week after the camp and that I, a person from my congregation gave me a book by Neil T. Anderson. And this is the quote. In it he said that God has not called us to fight with darkness. Listen. But God has called us to turn on the light. This is a very simple statement. God has not called us to fight darkness. But God has called us to turn on the light. And Pastor Victor says, and this blows my mind. This statement deeply impacted me. One word, Jesus said to the enemy, man shall live by every word of God. One word will change things. One word. Sometimes one song the worship teams will sing, just a song, a lie in the song. That this song has been blessing me. God, you are so good. Can you sing with me? God, you are so good. I believe it. God, you are so good. You are so good to me. It may be worse to your ears. To me, it's revelation. I was in South Africa for years planting churches. The Lord said to me one day, go back to Ghana. South Africa is like heaven if you are from Ghana. Everything is nice, you know. It's paradise. And the God loves me. I had, I had a white family, like you, giving me a full house, mansion, pool, everything, to live in for two years without paying light bills nor water bills. Can you put your hands together for me, please? I was not paying bills in South Africa. Kaledio opened their door for me. And I was, I was the lecturer in their Bible college. There, the Lord they didn't open the door for me to come to India. But when I went to Ghana, Ghana. You see, one, one, ha, may God have mercy over black, black countries in the name of Jesus. You see, South Africa is in Africa. But when the whites are speaking about the rest of the country, they say, we are going to Africa. I'm like, no, you are in Africa. Because <laughs> they don't see themselves to be Africans. Hallelujah. It's true. Well, most of the things we do are off the way. But in Ghana, the Lord sent my younger brother to be my John to India, Israel, and I follow suit. And the Lord gave me the name of my church, Be Made Whole, BMW. Every BMW car you see is for me. <laughs> Be Made Whole. And I was teaching the Word of God, Isaiah 3. I was, I teach it. Galatians 3.13, Christ our Redeemer from the curse of the Lord. I teach it. I don't I know what the name of Jesus is. I teach but not knowing my ministry is this. Not knowing that deliverance and healing makes people whole. So I had the name of a church, but I was lacking word. And the Lord has brought me here. Not from South Africa. From Ghana. <laughs> God, you are so good. <laughs> God, you are so good. Hallelujah. God, you are so good. You are so good to me. That is the goodness of God. And Pastor Charles and John were singing that song. That song blessed me. Suddenly, I had illumination of that, the words in the song. It's not how good the beat were, no. But the lines, it came alive that indeed God is good. You've heard it many times that God is good. 
But may you receive the light of that statement. So you will accept it that indeed God is good. Tell somebody God is good. Come on, say, this one they said is a day of boldness. Say it with boldness. Say God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. You are in Adonai. <laughs> Do you know what Adonai is? <laughs> you know what Adonai is? But if you walk with the meaning of the word Adonai, the blesser, if you know he's the blesser, one time Moses, Moses was called by God. And when the Lord said, go to Egypt and redeem my people, he said, well, I'm going, but tell me what your name is. <laughs> Give me the revelation of your name. Because the Hebrews understand that names goes with actions. Because your faith is the product of what you believe. He want to believe that what he is, is indeed going to happen. And the Lord said, indeed, you are clever, son. My name is I am. I'm not stopping there. My name is I am that I am. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. The Lord, Yahweh. Meaning the covenant keeping God. So Moses went with that revelation. The covenant keeping God. The one that fulfills every word he speaks. Adonai, the blesser. He will bless your business. He will bless your home. He will bless your marriage. If you see the light, it is yours. Receive it in the name of Jesus. So important for you to know what it means. That woman suffering from blood issue for 12 years. 12 years. Knew suddenly what is in Jesus. Touch the hands of his garment and instantly was made whole. Instantly. Was made whole. Hallelujah. When you receive who Jesus is, you receive the power of God. Romans 1 verse 16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because Jesus, paraphrasing it, Jesus is the power of to him who believes. Jesus. When he, he is revealed to you, receive power, dynamis. To he who believes. And so Paul asked. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Read with me. Paul asks, he said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable Unto his dead. I want to know. He was saying, teach me. Give me revelations of your word. I want to understand what I'm even preaching. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 3, the Lord revealed to Paul the mysteries of the word of God he's been preaching all his years. When he asked for revelation, the Lord gave him revelation of mysteries. May you ask it. May it be one of the prayers we pray. I have prayed this for 12 years every morning. Father, grant me revelation knowledge. Grant me revelation to your word that I may be blessed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12, when he was speaking to his son Timothy, listening to Paul, who was asking that the Lord must show him, he said, I know Second Timothy chapter 1, verse number 12. He said, I know for which cause I suffer also these things, yet I am not ashamed, for I know him whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to guard that which I have committed unto him against that day. Paul was saying, I know, and I know, and I know, and I believe, and I am so confident, and I am sure that he will not fail me. If that becomes your character. If that become part of your living, nothing will put you down. Circumstances will not change what you believe. Because you know, and you know, and you are sure that the Lord is faithful. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8, verse number 11, the word of God says, and this is so powerful. 
But if the spirit of him that raised up, remember Job said, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. There's a spirit in the man that brings illumination. So Romans is saying that, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So there may be parts in your life that may be dead, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, every dead thing in you becomes a life. Walk out today with your chest out, believing that, yes, I have the spirit of God in me. Everything that were dead are now alive in the name of him who died and rose on the third day. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes. Adam was dead, made of out of clay. But when the Lord breathed in his spirit onto the clay, he became a living soul. If the spirit of God that raised up Jesus from the dead, that is the spirit of rock, he breathed it. And that dead clay became a living soul. Hallelujah. Yes. Ezekiel saw in a vision dry bones, very dry. When he activated the rima of God and spoke, the Lord released the winds from the four corners of the earth and the bones received life. You have no excuse to fail. You have no excuse to die. There is a God, your God, who has given you his spirit. And his spirit brings alive every dead thing. Do you believe? Then receive it in the name of Jesus. It is in you. But Jeremiah 1.12 says, God says, I watch over my word to perform. So I remember in Genesis, after creation, the spirit of God hovers upon the face of the deep, going up and down, watching over his creation. God is watching over you. He's watching for your ear to decode what he is encoding. He's watching over you to get revelation. And then you will see performance. You will see healing. You will see signs and wonders happening in your life. You have seen people sharing testimonies on the screen. Read them in the Bible. I pray you will have your own personal testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, I believe. Hallelujah. Watching over his word. He's watching is over you. He's watching that if you will say, yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Then there will be performance in your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Allow the Holy Spirit to saturate you with the word of God. He say, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. It's not by might. It's not how good you are in science. It's not how good you are in economics. It doesn't take those things to know God. It's not by might. But by my spirit, say as the Lord. Everything is possible to him who believes. All things, not some things. Every disease is curable. Every disease, viruses, every disease. People with no wounds are able to give birth. People with no legs are able to get leg grown and walk in. If you want it, you will receive them. Sarah, Sarah, that old woman became pregnant. And when she received the prophecy, she was laughing. And so she named her son, Laughter, Isaac. May you name your miracle Laughter. I said, may you name your miracle Laughter in the name of Jesus Christ. Laughter, because, you know, she was like me. Yes, you. Every me in your life will change to be, yes, you. God is saying, yes, you, you. The Lord used Pastor Victor to revive me yesterday when we were sharing about my life. 
And he said, you might, do you know that the Lord allowed those things? They were part of your life to reveal you. The stone that the builders rejected, the outcast, the nobody now has become the main key. Now, without it, the house cannot be built. That is me, and that is you. You see, when you are from a good home, eh? when papa and mommy are rich, some of these things we say you don't appreciate them. For some of you, you wake up like now. Emmanuel, you want coffee or tea? You know, everything is there, so you don't know what I'm saying. But if you are from there, if you are from the dung hill, if you are from that, you call the place in Ghana Zongo. Zongo. Say Zongo. If you are from Zongo, huh, and then you appreciate what the Lord has done for you. The stone that the builders rejected. Me, standing in Adonai preaching. Me, yes, you, Emmanuel. The stone. May this week be the better week in your office for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Love your business. Love it. The parents love their son Moses. In spite of all the warnings to kill their sons, the parents said, we refuse to kill Moses. He is beautiful. Say, my marriage is beautiful. Please say it. Say, my marriage is beautiful. Say, my business is beautiful. Say, my son is beautiful. Don't kill him. Don't kill your business. Love it. And the more you receive this revelation that what the Lord has given to me is good, it will become good for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to end. Let me tell you some few things quickly. And then you are going to know that you are just not anybody. You are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. It is not going to be worse in sentences for you anymore. They are going to be something that you align yourself with. And believe them that you are indeed the head, not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Jesus Christ, who is the salvation of Yahweh, is your Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, that's colored straight from creation even until now. The one that's covered the shame of Adam and Eve in the garden. Jesus Christ, the one that was brought instead of the son of Abraham, Isaac. Jesus Christ, the Passover lamb. Jesus Christ, the lamb of God who died on the cross for you and I. He is your Lord and Christ. For many years, the Hebrews did never know this. But when the Holy Spirit came, Peter said, Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that this same Jesus, whom you crucified, God, Yahweh, has now made no more the son of Mary, no more the son of Joseph the carpenter, but this Jesus is now both, do they say both, Lord and Christ, the anointed. He saw by revelation The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. He received this by revelation. That Peter, is no, Jesus is no more just Jesus. Some of us, we know him by his beautiful name, Jesus. But he has not been revealed to us as the Lord of our lives, the anointed. But when he saw it, his life changed. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 27, he says, Christ, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Can you please read with me in the last sentence, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory. 
You see, if in, in 1 John 5, 7, the Word of God says three things bear record in heaven. And these three things are one. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. So when Jesus is in you, the Father is here. The Spirit is here. He is the way to victory. He's the way for the answers. When he lives in you, you have hope that you are going to make it well. When he lives in you, face countenance change. Because you now begin to have faith in you. Say with me again, Christ in me. Christ in me. The hope of glory. glory. We do this in Africa. Can you do this? Look at somebody's face. Tell him. Say, you are... The walking ark of the covenant. You are the walking ark of the covenant. In you is the manner of God. In you is the battered rod of Aaron. Hmm. In you is the ten commandments. I am the Walking ark of the covenant, every foe bows when they see my presence. Every enemy flees because Christ in me, the hope of glory. Mm-hmm.